Hi my dear students in my previous video you learned some of the basic points regarding to this chapter now in this video i am going to explain about units of electric charge coulomb's law vector form of coulomb's law and some other few concepts that starts with units of electric charge so si unit of this electric charge is coulomb so what is the si unit of this electric charge it is a coulomb and we can write with the help of capital letter c so what is the si unit of electric charge coulomb and what is the cgs unit of electric charge so cgs unit of electric charge is esu so esu is nothing but electrostatic unit and 1 coulomb is equal to 3 into 10 power 9 esu this is the relation between coulomb and esu so 1 coulomb is equal to 3 into 10 power 9 esu this is the relationship between si unit of electric charge and the cgs unit of electric charge and from this we can write 1 esu is equal to 1 divided by 3 into 10 power 9 coulomb 1 by 3 means 0.33 into 10 power minus 9 coulomb this is 3.33 into 10 power minus 10 coulomb so 1 esu is equal to 3.33 into 10 power minus 10 coulomb means 1 coulomb is equal to 3 into 10 power 9 esu or 1 esu is equal to 3.33 into 10 power minus 10 coulombs there is another unit of this electric charge that is absolute coulomb 1 absolute coulomb is equal to 10 coulomb So one absolute coulomb is equal to how many coulombs? Ten coulombs. Next, dimensional formula of this electric charge. So electric charge Q is equal to electric current into time. Electric current unit is ampere. Time unit is second. So unit of this. electric charge that is ampere second from this q is equal to ampere second with help of this we can dimensional formula of this electric charge so dimensional formula of electric charge dimensional formula of this electric charge so dimensional formula of electric current is a1 and dimensional formula of this time second that is nothing but t1 capital t1 so what is the dimensional formula of this electric charge a1 t1 some other people can write even with this like this also that is i1 t1 so a r i either one you can use in the place of electric current so dimensional formula of electric charge is a1 t1 r what is that i1 t1 so this is the dimensional formula of this electric charge so these are the units of electric charge what is si unit of electric charge coulomb what is cgs unit of electric charge electro and there you know, is any relation between uh, si unit of electric charge and cgs unit of electric charge yes then what is the relationship between these two one coulomb is equal to 3 into 10 power 9 esu or one esu is equal to 3.33 into 10 power minus 10 coulomb so one absolute coulomb is equal to 10 coulombs and dimensional formula of this electric charge is equal to a1 t1 r i1 t1 so coulomb's law states that the force of attraction or repulsion between two point stationary electric charges is directly proportional to the product of 
magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and adds along the line joining between those two charges. So Coulomb's law states that the force of attraction or repulsion between two point stationary electric charges. So here Coulomb's law is applicable for point stationary electric charges. That's why point stationary charges term must be there in the statement. So Coulomb's law states that the force of attraction or repulsion between two point stationary electric charges is directly proportional to the product of magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and this force acts along the line joining between those two charges. Now we will see the explanation of Coulomb's law. So consider two charges one is Q1 and another one is Q2 which are separated by a small r distance in vacuum as shown in figure. So how many charges I have taken? Two charges I have taken. What are those two charges? Q1 and Q2. So Q1 and Q2 are the two charges which are placed in vacuum by separation of how much R. So these two charges size is negligible by comparing the distance between these two. That's why here Q1 and Q2 are like a point charges. Why these Q1, Q2 are point charges here? By comparing their size with the distance between these two charges is negligible. That's why these two charges are point charges. Now we can apply what is that Coulomb's law. So according to this Coulomb's law, the electrostatic force between these two charges Q1 and Q2 is directly proportional to the magnitude of Q1 into Q2. It means that the electrostatic force between this Q1 and Q2 is directly proportional to the product of magnitude of these two charges. So F proportional to modulus of Q1 into Q2. This is equation 1. And another part is the nine Coulomb's law. How this electrostatic force depends on distance. So this electrostatic force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between these two charges. This is equation 2. By combining this 1 and 2 means from 1 and 2, F is proportional to modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. So this is from these two, 1 and 2. Next one, F is equal to constant K into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. So I remove this proportionality by keeping the constant K. Here K is called Coulomb's constant. So K is equal, what is that? Coulomb's constant. So K is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught. This is equal to 9 into 10 power 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb square. So in the place of K, we can write 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. So F is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. This is the electrostatic force between these two charges Q1 and Q2 which are placed in vacuum with a separation of small r.
Next, we will see the same electrostatic force in between these two charges in a medium. Coulomb's law in a medium. So, F is proportional to modulus of Q1 into Q2, equation 1. F proportional to 1 by R square, that is equation 2. From 1 and 2, we will get this one. By removing this proportionality and keeping what is the constant k, so k is called here Coulomb constant, then f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of q1 into q2 divided by r square. Here epsilon naught is called permittivity of free space or vacuum. Here epsilon naught is called permittivity of free space or vacuum. Now we will see this Coulomb's law in a medium. Next, these two charges Q1 and Q2 are placed in a medium, not in vacuum, are placed in a medium means other than vacuum. Then, how will be the electrostatic force between these two? So, that electrostatic force between these two charges in a medium other than vacuum, that is Fm, is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. This is equation 4. So, earlier I have taken that F is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square as an equation 3. Now, this is equation 4. So, this is the electrostatic force between two charges in a medium. Here epsilon is called permittivity of a medium. We will see the definition of this permittivity of a medium. So what is this epsilon? Permittivity of a medium. So permittivity of a medium is a property of the medium due to which it can influence the force between charges. So, the property of a medium which can influence the force between charges. So, what is that property? Permittivity. So, permittivity of a medium is the property of the medium which can influence the electric force between the charges. And here epsilon naught is called what is that? Permittivity of free space. So, epsilon naught is equal to 8.854 into 10 power minus 12. What is that unit? Coulomb square per Newton meter square. So, epsilon naught is equal to 8.854 into 10 power minus 12 Coulomb square per Newton meter square. This is the value of epsilon naught. And we can rewrite this epsilon in terms of relative permittivity or dielectric constant. We will see that definition also. So, epsilon r is called relative permittivity. So, relative permittivity. So, relative permittivity is defined as the ratio of permittivity of the medium to the permittivity of free space. So what is mean by this relative permittivity of a medium? So relative permittivity of a medium is defined as the ratio of permittivity of the medium to the permittivity of free space. That is epsilon r is equal to epsilon by epsilon naught. From this epsilon is equal to epsilon r into epsilon naught. From equation 4 fm is equal to 1 by 4 pi. In the place of epsilon I can write what is that? Epsilon r into epsilon naught and remaining thing as usual. Modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. So this is also another form of Coulomb's law in a medium.
So Fm is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon r epsilon naught into modulus of q1 into q2 divided by r square. Here epsilon r we can write like a k also that is called dielectric constant. So k is equal to epsilon by epsilon naught. So it is a dimensionless quantity and even unitless also. So epsilon, epsilon naught both will have the same units. So get cancelled. So it is a purely ratio. It's a purely numerical value. That's why k doesn't have any unit and dimensions. It is a dimensionless and a unitless quantity. Electrostatic force between two charges in vacuum F is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. This is equation 1. And the same electrostatic force between these two charges only in a medium that is other than vacuum is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. This is equation 2. Now, divide the equation 1 with equation 2. F divided by Fm is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square all divided by 1 by 4 pi epsilon into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. These terms get cancelled. 1 by 4 pi, 1 by 4 pi get cancelled and don't cancel F and F. Okay. Now F by Fm is equal to 1 by epsilon naught divided by 1 by epsilon. That is F divided by Fm is equal to epsilon divided by epsilon naught. So epsilon means for permittivity of a medium and epsilon naught is called permittivity of free space. It is a ratio now. So this ratio we already know that it is relative permittivity. So relative permittivity is equal to F divided by Fm. It is also a ratio only. So F means electrostatic force between two charges in vacuum. Fm means electrostatic force between same charges separated by same distance but placed in, in a medium that is other than vacuum. So epsilon r is a relative permittivity over. So this one we can write f by fm is equal to epsilon by epsilon naught and epsilon r we can write like a k. k means dielectric constant that is f by fm. Now fm is equal to force divided by k. So f is the electrostatic force between two charges in vacuum. Now total setup is placed in a medium that is other than vacuum. By keeping the same distance and not alter the charges then force will be decreases by how many times? k times the force will be decreases. So Fm is equal to F by k. And Coulomb studied all these things with the help of torsion balance and got the electrostatic force between two point stationary charges. And Coulomb's law is applicable only for point stationary charges. So Coulomb's law is not applicable when the charges are not at rest. To apply Coulomb's law, at least one charge must be at rest. Means at least one charge must be stationary. These are nothing but limitations of Coulomb's law. So limitations of Coulomb's law means 
First one is Coulomb's law is applicable only for point charges and Coulomb's law is applicable for static charges. Static charges means stationary or charges are at rest. Since the force is a vector quantity, even this force also we can write in a vector form, that is Coulomb's law in vector form. So consider two charges Q1 and Q2 and their position vectors and their Position vectors are R1 bar and R2 bar. So what are these two R1 bar and R2 bar? These two are the position vectors of Q1 and Q2. And here, this is the position vector which is leading from Q1 to Q2 which is leading from Q1 to Q2. So starting point is Q1 and ending point is what is that? Q2. So that's why this is R21 bar. So R21 bar means it is the position vector which is leading from 1 to 2 means Q1 to Q2. And the position vector which is leading from Q2 to Q1 that is R12 bar. So R21 bar means that is leading from Q1 to Q2 and R12 bar means that is leading from Q2 to Q1. So from diagram we can say that R12 bar is equal to minus R21 bar because both are opposite but their magnitudes are same. So modulus of R12 bar is equal to modulus of R21 bar that is R12 is equal to R21. Now we will see the vector form of electrostatic force between Q1 and Q2. First we will go with force on Q2 charge due to Q1. So force on which charge? Q2 charge due to Q1 charge that is F21. So F21 bar means force on charge Q2 due to Q1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by what is the distance between these two that is R1 to R, R21 magnitude only if you take then R12 is equal to R21 here R21 square because directly proportional to product of magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and this is R21 cap so R21 cap is the unit vector which is directing from Q1 to Q2. Now F21 bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R21 square. This unit vector I can write like this that is R21 bar divided by R21 from vector's concept. Now, F21 bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R12 square into R21 that is R21 cubed into R21 bar. This is equation 1. Next, we will see the electrostatic force on Q1 charge due to Q2 charge. That is F12 bar. So F12 bar means force on charge Q1 due to 
charge Q2. So F12 bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught that is modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R12 square into R12 cap. This one also we can write like this F12 bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of q1 into q2 divided by r12 square into so this one we can write like this from vector's concept that is f12 bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of q1 into q2 divided by r12 cubed into r12 bar this is equation 2 and we know that R12 bar is equal to minus R21 bar. That is F12 bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R12 cube. Here this is minus R21 bar. And from 1. And this 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Modulus of Q1 into Q2, modulus of Q1 into Q2. R21 cubed and R12 cubed. These two are same in magnitude. And here R21 bar, here minus R21 bar. So take minus here, that is minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught modulus of Q1 into Q2 divided by R12 cubed into R21 bar. So from equation 1, this is F12 bar will become minus F21 bar. So, F12 bar is equal to minus F21 bar. So, Coulomb's law obeys Newton's third law. So, these two are the vector form of Coulomb's law. This is equation 1 and equation 2. These are the vector form of Coulomb's law. We can write even this form also. So these forms also we can write as a vector form of Coulomb's law. So what is the position vector of this Q1 charge? R1. What is the position vector of this Q2 charge? R2 bar. R21 means it is a vector which is leading from where to where? Q1 to Q2. And R12 bar means that is a vector which is leading from Q2 to Q1. And rest of the things same. So this is the vector form of Coulomb's law. So now what you learn? Units of electric charge. Then after the dimensional formula of electric charge. After the Coulomb's law. After Coulomb's law, you learn the permittivity of medium, relative permittivity. After that. Coulomb's law in vector form, limitations of Coulomb's law also you will learn. Here, relative permittivity epsilon r is there now. That is also known as specific inductive capacity. So, it is also known as specific inductive capacity of the medium epsilon r. It is purely numerical value. Now, to not it over this concept, okay? Now, next one is force due to multiple charges. Nothing but superposition principle. So, force due to multiple charges. Here, Q charge I have taken at point O. I have taken Q charge. And from this, I have taken Q1 charge, 
with a distance r1 and here q2 charge with a distance r2 and here q3 charge with a distance what is that r3 and so on here i have taken q n charge with a distance r n now what is the position vector of this q1 from this r1 bar what is the position vector of this q2 from this okay r2 bar and this is r3 bar and this is r n bar now any charge you can take so for convenient purpose i have taken this q charge so now our aim is to calculate resultant force on this q charge which is placed at o due to the presence of other charges this is nothing but force due to multiple charges first we will see the statement of this force due to multiple charges the resultant force on any charge okay the resultant force on any charge due to a number of other charges so the resultant force on any charge due to a number of other charges due to a number of other charges is equals to the vector sum of is equals to the vector sum of all the forces okay na vector sum of all the forces due to the other charges on this charge all taken at a time so all the forces are taken at a time by taking one force next taking one force and ignoring the second one or first one this is not the correct one all forces together at a time we need to consider so this is one force due to multiple charges our superposition principle states that the resultant force on any charge the resultant force on any charge due to a number of other charges due to a number of other charges is equals to the vector sum of is equals to the vector sum of all the forces okay na all the forces exerted by which charges other charges on which charge on this charge on this charge and all forces taken one at a time all forces are taken one at a time so once again we'll see the statement of this force due to multiple charge important two marks question so resultant force acting on any charge due to a number of other charges is equals to the vector sum of all the forces exerted by the other charges on this charge and all forces are taken one at a time now we will see the mathematical form of this so now i am calculating force on charge q which is there at o due to the other charges now we will see the one f1 bar f1 bar means force between q and q1 f1 bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into modulus of q into q1 divided by r1 square this is equation 1 now like this only we can calculate force between q1 and q2 also so f2 bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon that is uh, modulus of q into q2 divided by r2 square this is equation 2 next f3 bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into modulus of q into q3 divided by 
R3 square. This is equation 3. And so on. Fn bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q into Qn. Modulus of Q into Qn divided by Rn square. That is equation last one. Okay, can take a nth equation. Now, by combining all these, means vectorically we need to add, that is a vector sum of all these forces. So, resultant force acting on this Q due to the presence of other charges, F bar is equal to F1 bar plus F2 bar plus F3 bar plus and so on plus Fn bar. That is F bar is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of q into q1 divided by r1 square plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of q into q2 divided by r2 square plus and so on plus n the term directly we can write that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into modulus of q into qn divided by rn square. In this Q by 4 pi epsilon naught is a common term in all these things. So we can take common. That is Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into here Q1 by R1 square. And here Q2 by R2 square. And so on. What is that? Qn by Rn square. This is the force due to multiple charges. So once again we will see the statement of force due to multiple charges. The resultant force acting on any point charge. The resultant force acting on which type of charge? Any point charge is equals to the vector sum of all these things. So we will see the statement. The resultant force acting on any point charge Due to a number of other charges, due to a number of other charges is equals to the with some vector sum of all the forces exerted by the other charges on this point charge and all forces are taken one at a time. So this is force due to multiple charges. Next we will go with, what is that, stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium and the neutral equilibrium. First we will go with stable equilibrium. Stable equilibrium. So stable equilibrium means when a point charge is said to be in stable equilibrium, if it has a tendency to retaining its original position when it is disturbed. Suppose this is the point charge. Initially is there here. It got disturbed this side. Okay, it got disturbed this side. And suppose this point charge having a tendency to retaining its original position means it will come back to its original position. Then this type of one is called what is that? Stable equilibrium. So what is mean by stable equilibrium? So, a point charge is said to be in stable equilibrium if it has a tendency to retaining it, retaining to its original position when it is disturbed. And in this equilibrium, nothing but in stable equilibrium, this point charge will have minimum potential energy. Next, unstable equilibrium. Which one? Unstable equilibrium. 
unstable equilibrium so unstable equilibrium means quite opposite so a, a point charge is said to be in unstable equilibrium it doesn't have any tendency to retain its original position when it is disturbed for example here q i have taken it got disturbed to this point that is a q okay new position is this one this is the old position and this is the new position and this charged particle nothing but point charge not having any tendency to retain its original position so this type of one is called what is that unstable equilibrium and another thing is there here if this point charge is not retain its original position but it is at rest even at a new position then that type of equilibrium is called neutral equilibrium so neutral equilibrium means a point charge is said to be in neutral equilibrium if it is at rest even in its new position and uh, even in its new position also so this point charge is got disturbed from its original position got the new position even though it is disturbed from its old position to the new position still it is at rest it means that it is in neutral equilibrium so neutral equilibrium means a point charge said to be in neutral equilibrium if it is at rest even in its new position so this is stable equilibrium unstable equilibrium and neutral equilibrium see the definition of coulomb So according to Coulomb's law the force of interaction between two point stationary charges Q1 and Q2 which are separated by a distance r in vacuum is given by F is equal to K into Q1 Q2 divided by r square by substituting Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to 1 coulomb and r is equal to 1 meter then F is equal to K so the value of k is 9 into 10 power 9 so f is equal to 9 into 10 power 9 newton so when we will get f is equal to 9 into 10 power 9 newton if both charges are equal magnitude of 1 coulomb and those two are separated by a distance 1 meter in vacuum so from this we can define the si unit of charge that is coulomb so 1 coulomb is the charge that when placed at a distance of 1 meter from another identical charge so 1 coulomb is the charge this charge is placed at a distance of 1 meter from another identical charge in vacuum then if the force of repulsion between these two why the force of repulsion here since both are identical charges so the force between two identical charges is a repulsive force so that's why these two charges experience a force of how much 9 into 10 power 9 newton what type of force it is it is repulsive force so 1 coulomb is the charge that when placed at a distance of 1 meter from another identical charge in vacuum experiences a repulsive force of 9 into 10 power 9 newton then that charge we can say that it is a 1 coulomb this is the definition of coulomb so don't get confused here what is the si unit of charge means coulomb define the si unit of charge means you need to write this definition